everybody, for day 16 of Commit, we're going to be staying low on our mat and working from some more easy poses to a little bit more challenging poses towards the end of the video. I want you to listen to your body and don't do anything that you feel you shouldn't. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to stick around to the end of the video where we break down a pose from today's practice. Let's begin seated in an easy, comfortable position, connecting to our breath hands on your knees or folded in your lap. Going into some neck stretches, let's gaze down, then up. Being careful here not to feel any pinching in the neck. Down. And up. One more time, down and up. To center, gaze over to the right. To the left. To the right. And left. One more time to the right. And left. To center. Tilt the head to the right, ear to shoulder. Option to gently apply the hand on the head here for an additional stretch without actually pulling, just resting the hand here. Release, over to the left side. And release. Let's roll those shoulders back, moving at your own pace. Hands to your shoulders. Let's draw circles with our elbows forward now, bringing those elbows as high as we can on each turn. Release your arms ahead of you, elbows bent, palms facing each other. Let's go into eagle arms, right arm over left, wrapping the forearms with the goal to press the palms together. Keep the upper arms parallel to the mat, getting wide through the shoulder blades. Untwist, other side, left arm over right. release. Draw the right arm up overhead, bend at the elbow and reach the palm down the back of your neck between your shoulder blades as much as you can. Left hand reaches for the elbow to assist the stretch through the tricep. Release. 
release. Opposite side, left hand reaches down the neck towards the middle of the shoulder blades, right hand assists. your hands on your knees. We're going into seated cat cow. Draw the navel back, round out the back as much as you can on an exhale and then inhale pressing the belly and the chest forward. Finding that same familiar movement that we have in a regular cat cow from table pose in this seated position here. Let's use our hands on our knees now to assist us in drawing the body front to back as we move with our breath. Making your way to all fours, bring the knees together, feet apart. We're going into hero pose. Sit down between the feet as much as you can with an internal rotation at the hips. Sit up tall in hero pose, hands in your lap or holding onto your ankles or feet. Deepen your breath. Option to recline in hero pose, coming first to your elbows or forearms, carefully making your way down onto your back. Whether you're seated or reclined, aim to keep your knees together. If you've reclined, prop yourself back up to seated, first coming to the elbows or forearms, carefully making your way back up. Release the legs, bringing the feet ahead of you, knees bent, as we recline onto our backs. Taking the soles of the feet together, Drop your knees out wide, hands on your belly to a reclined bound angle position. Allow gravity to open your hips as you deepen your breath. the pose bringing the knees together draw the right knee into chest extending the left leg out long allow the body to relax in this position Reaching right hand to foot or big toe, or just holding onto the leg, extend the right leg up, bringing it as straight as you can. Option to go deeper into the stretch by drawing the leg further in towards you. If this is hard on your lower back, you can bend the left knee, drawing the foot up a little bit on the mat. Reaching again for the foot or the toes, open the right leg out to the side, to a reclined extended big toe hold. Left arm reaches out to the side as we gaze over our left shoulder.
bring the right leg back in. Left hand guides the right knee over to the left side of your mat in a twist. Extend the right arm this time, gazing over the right shoulder. Releasing the twist to center. Draw the left knee into chest. Extend the right leg out long on your mat. Allow the body to relax. hand to foot, extend the left leg, bringing it as straight as you can. Again, option to go deeper into the stretch by drawing the leg in closer towards you. If this is hard on your lower back, you can bend the right knee, drawing the foot up a little bit on the mat. Return the hand to foot, send the left leg out to the side in a reclined extended big toe hold. Right arm comes out to the side as we gaze over the right shoulder. Release, bending the leg, right hand guides the left knee over to the right side of the mat in a twist. Extend the left arm out to the side, gazing over the left shoulder. Take your time releasing the twist onto your back now with both knees bent, feet planted about hip width apart. Place your right ankle across the left leg above the knee. Open up through the right hip and then draw the left leg in towards your chest in a reclined pigeon pose. Lower the left foot down to the mat, release the right leg, let's do that on the other side. Left ankle crosses over the right leg. Draw that right knee into chest. lowering both feet down onto the mat. Next, let's bring both legs to a table position, keeping the legs glued together. Send your arms out wide at shoulder height, then drop both legs together to the right side in a twist, picking them up over to the left side. Try as much as possible to keep the knees and feet glued together as you lift the legs to twist them over to the other side. Keep it going.
Last one. And release the feet down onto the mat. Taking your feet to hip distance apart, arms down at your sides. Let's go to bridge pulses. Incorporating those arms, bringing them up with the hips and lowering the arms as we lower the hips almost all the way down, raising them back up just before the tailbone touches down on the mat, keeping those glutes and legs engaged throughout. Flow with your breath, moving at your own pace. Last one, bring it all the way down. Draw one leg in, then the other, holding on to the feet. You can wrap your peace fingers around the big toes. Grasp the outer or inner edges of the feet in a happy baby position. Drawing the knees as close to the outsides of our shoulders as we can. Soles of the feet are pointing straight up towards the ceiling. like you can find a little rock in the body from side to side here. Release your grip and straighten the legs up to a legs up the wall pose, allowing them to just hang out here without pointing through the toes or flexing through the feet. Arms at your sides. Keeping the left leg where it is, let's lower and lift that right leg five times. Four, three, two more, and last one. Left leg this time, lower down for five, four, three, two, and one. Back to legs up the wall pose, you have the option to stay here or move into a shoulder stand, supporting yourself, hands to your lower back. Take your time shimmying up as high as you can onto those shoulders. In position, bring your legs together and point long through the toes. You can stay in shoulder stand or option to keep going, moving to plow pose, slowly lowering the legs as much as you can, maybe even touching your toes down behind your head. You can keep your hands on your lower back for support or bring them down to the mat. If you're in plow pose or shoulder stand, let's release, carefully returning to legs up the wall pose. let's position our hands beneath our seat, elbows out at our sides. Slowly and with control, lower both legs together down onto the mat, pointing through the toes. Press through the elbows or forearms, lifting the chest up, arching the back to a fish pose, allowing the head to drop back as much as is comfortable for you, being careful of any pinching. You can float the head above the mat or gently rest the top of the head on the mat. 
to release fish pose, lift the head gazing towards the toes, lower down to the mat and release the hands. Let's draw our legs in, hands on our knees for a little rest, rocking a little from side to side. Now you can stay here and continue to rest or move to a wheel pose if that's something that you've been practicing. Bringing your feet down to the mat. I like to start with my feet positioned a little wider than hip width apart. Place your hands beneath your shoulders as much as you can. Press through the hips, back and shoulders follow as we come up to a deep back bend. Take your time here and if this is something that you're working towards or want to work towards, stick around to the end of the video for some tips. Gently release all the way down onto your back and hug your knees to chest. Release the legs now, lengthening them out onto your mat together. Raising the arms up overhead, we're gonna go into a banana pose. Step the right foot off the right edge of the mat. Cross the left ankle over the right. Side bend, bringing the right arm off to the right edge of the mat. Right hand grabs onto the left wrist as we give it a little bit of a tug, stretching long through the entire left side of the body here. Let's release to center and then walk the feet over to the other side. Left foot comes off the left edge of the mat, right ankle crosses over the left leg, side bend to the left, left hand grabs onto the right wrist as we give it a little pull, stretching long through the right side of the body. Let's release, walking everything back to center. Widen your feet, taking up space on your mat. Lower your arms to your sides, palms facing up in Savasana. Allow your feet to relax. Let's move up the body, scanning for any tension that we can release. Getting heavy through the legs, hips are relaxed. We feel the rise and fall of our belly. Our chest melts down into the mat as we release any tension in our shoulders. Moving up, making sure that our throat isn't being held tight. Moving up to our jaw and our brow, finding softness here. Deep breaths. Flex the feet and get wide through the hands, waking up the body. Engage the leg muscles, making fists. Reach those arms up overhead to a morning stretch, point through the toes, and make your way to seated, either by rocking up or turning onto your side and pressing up. wheel pose, that back bend that some of us maybe used to do all the time in the playground and maybe some of us never could or never thought that we could. So the first thing that we want to make sure before getting into a wheel pose is that we warm up properly. It is a more advanced pose. So we want to make sure that we're warming up the back, maybe doing some cat-cow stretches, a few twists, and that we really stretch and open up the chest and shoulders. Now if you picture that back bend, the entire front of the body is going to open up and get long. So we really want to make sure we've stretched here and that we're open here. Okay, so we're going to have to get really, really long, long and strong in the shoulders. 
And now I'm just going to talk a little bit about wheel pose before I start getting into it because there's a lot of things to consider before we actually enter it because as soon as you enter the pose, you're going to have to activate and engage a bunch of stuff at once and there's a lot to think of all at once so it does take a little bit of practice. One thing to consider is that you don't want a sharp angle in your spine. When you're in the back bend, you want to make sure that you have a continuous curve going through the back. So no sharp angle so that we're not pinching anywhere along the spine. To do that, we really want to control that movement there. So we're going to be staying really, really strong through the upper body while at the same time getting long through the abdominals. Our hands, just like any other time that we have our hands down, we can spread our fingers wide and give us a really, really strong base. We want to keep them about shoulder width apart. And the goal is going to be to press the shoulders above the wrists. And that's really difficult to do, so that's something that we're going to work towards. Another thing to consider is maybe to get into the back bend, your feet are going to have to be a little bit wider and pointing out to start. But our goal is to bring our feet hip distance apart, toes pointing forward. As we lift up, we want to make sure that we're keeping the legs really, really strongly engaged, especially through the inner thighs and the glutes. And this is going to help us press the hips up and allow for that arching shape. Okay, if we're not engaging through the legs, the hips tend to sag a little bit, the knees might be bending a lot, and that's going to contribute to a sharp angle in the back. So what's really going to help with that strong curve is engaging throughout the lower body as well. So when we first get into our wheel pose, maybe we're not quite strong enough to press all the way up at once. So an option is to press onto the top of the head first, making sure that we're not putting too much pressure into the neck. So we wanna keep our hands grounded there as well. But we might wanna reposition our hands, get a little bit more comfortable, or just gather a little bit more strength. Big inhale, and then on a strong exhale, we press up. And so it is challenging because at the same time that we're trying to focus on getting long and open through the front of the body, we're also trying to control the curve and control the pose so we do have to engage a lot of the body. Get really, really strong and hold it there so that we're not hurting ourselves at all. And then finally, coming out of the pose. So it's really important that we remain confident, that we're not gonna hurt ourselves because we are gonna control every little bit of this movement. And to come out of the pose, Simply bend the arms, bend the knees, lower down to the mat with as much control as you can, and then we're gonna hug the knees to counter that stretch. And so I'll demonstrate the modification of first coming up onto the top of the head before pressing all the way up. So what I wanna do is place my hands as close to my shoulders as I can. If I can tuck my fingers underneath my shoulders, all the better. But often, when we can't do that, we're gonna be a little bit further back, and we think we're not strong enough to press up. That's usually not the case. We're not mobile enough in the shoulders yet. And, and so that's really gonna affect the amount of strength that we can put into that press, is where our hands are positioned. So, hands shoulder width apart, we're gonna tuck them under the shoulders and feet really, really strong. And just to ease in the press up a little bit, I'm gonna bring my feet just a little bit wider than my hips. And I'm gonna keep them close to my hips. So I don't wanna be out here because that's gonna be really difficult to press up. So I'm gonna bring my, my feet back close to my hips. My feet. And then hands here, we're gonna press up to the top of the head first. And then I can reposition my hands, get really strong, big inhale, and rest. Once I'm up into this position, I can come up onto my tiptoes, I can walk my feet back a little bit, and then I can press the body back to try to stack the shoulders over the wrists. And then to release, I simply bend through the knees and the arms, lower down, and I'm gonna hug the knees. Good. So what you do once you come up, whether you keep the feet flat, whether you come up onto the tiptoes, walk in, walk out, maybe you just wanna stay still because getting up into the wheel pose 
is enough for you, that's totally up to you. So once you're there, your main focus is going to be the integrity of the pose. You want to make sure that you're holding it as best you can and really controlling what's happening in your body. That's the most important thing is to stay safe first. If you feel safe moving your hands, moving your feet, then do so. Play around with the pose a little bit. So I'm just going to show you what it looks like when we press all the way up in one shot. So same thing, my hands are going to tuck underneath my shoulders as much as they can. Move my hair. I'm going to bring my feet back because I like to move my feet as soon as I get up. But So I'll show you how I do it and then I'll show you how we should do it. <laughs> so I'm going to bring my feet wide, close to my hips, hands under my shoulders, press up, and then I'm looking down between my hands. So, if you want to try to enter the pose where you don't need to move your feet at all and they're exactly where they should be once you come up, you're going to have to bring your heels close to your hips just like I was doing, but you want to keep them in line with your hips. So feet are going to be hip distance apart, toes are pointing forward. Now I had already mentioned engaging the muscles all here. You really want to make sure you're engaging those inner thighs. So same idea, start here, and then we're going to press up. And as you come up, lengthen through the front of the body and the shoulders and the chest and the armpits. And that's it. It's something that becomes much easier with practice. Um, but it is one of those things that if you practice it a little bit too often and you don't quite have that mobility or that flexibility, you can get a little bit sore. So just take your time with it, listen to your body, um, and if it is a goal for you, just make sure that you're not just entering wheel pose willy-nilly, that you are warming up the body before going into it. And if you feel like you, maybe you overdid it, give yourself a little bit of a break before you practice it again.